How's it going, guys? So we have a medium difficulty question for renal slash pharmacology for step one. This is not going to be a lengthy clip. I will tell you exactly what you need to know, not waste our fucking time. So before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created a Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now I'll start the clip. Two weeks after admission to hospital for hip surgery complicated by post-op sepsis, a 55-year-old man develops oliguria. Current medications are ceftriaxone, vancomycin, amikacin, simvastatin, lisinopril, metformin, and aproxen. Urinalysis shows dirty brown granular casts. The agent most likely responsible for this patient's condi condition inhibits production of which of the following. So this patient obviously has acute tubular necrosis, muddy brown or dirty brown granular casts in conjunction with oliguria. That's easy, but the question's asking, OMG, which drug does it and what's its mechanism of action? So let's just walk through the answer choices here. Should I say cell wall, wrong fucking answer. This refers to ceftriaxone or vancomycin, which inhibits cell wall synthesis slash cross-linking. Ceftriaxone, a third generation cephalosporin. You need to know that the combination of a third or fourth generation cephalosporin plus vancomycin is just general broad spectrum antibiotic therapy that can be used for nosocomial hospital acquired ventilator acquired infections. The combo uh, ceftriaxone vancomycin can be used in empiric treatment for suspected bacterial meningitis. Uh, can also just be used for general sepsis um, when you're not sure what the diagnosis actually is. Severe strep infections can be used uh, empirically. I've seen it on the OBGYN forms for uh, early onset GBS, group B strep disease in neonates uh, for meningitis, uh, pneumonia, sepsis. Uh, vancomycin can cause red man syndrome, okay? Uh, histamine release, slower infusion is necessary. Uh, the point is, it's the wrong fucking answer. I mean, what are we going to do? Spend 49 minutes, talk about every little fucking detail? I said I was going to be concise here. So choice B, cholesterol synthesis, wrong answer. Uh, this would refer to simvastatin, of course. Uh, statins inhibit HMG-CoA reductase, rate-limiting enzyme, cholesterol synthesis. You, you need to know statins are hepatotoxic, cause elevated uh, LFTs, as well as myositis can increase creatine kinase, proximal muscle uh, weakness slash pain. Uh, choice C, enzyme, wrong answer. This refers to lisinopril, ACE inhibitor, okay? So preventing preventing the cleavage of angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. You need to know ACE inhibitors uh, can cause hyperkalemia, high potassium. You're interfering with RAS, preventing ultimately the secretion of potassium distally in the kidney. ACE inhibitors can cause dry cough. They should also be avoided in patients with hereditary angioedema as they can cause hereditary, or sorry, they can cause angioedema. Uh, choice D, gluconeogenic products, very vague answer. This could refer to a myriad of biochemical substrates. It's meant to be vague. When students don't know an answer, they choose weird sounding shit. This could in theory refer to metformin. Okay, metformin uh, inhibits uh, gluconeogenesis and uh, increases glycolysis, okay? Uh, one of the first line therapies for type two diabetes. Uh, metformin can cause lactic acidosis, avoid in and low bicarb, avoid in patients with renal insufficiency, high creatinine, remove metformin. Uh, also, metformin is often removed from regimens if patients enter hospital in case IV contrast is needed because the combo of metformin plus IV contrast is not good for the kidney. Wrong fucking answer. Choice E, prostaglandin synthesis. Uh, this is naproxen. Wrong answer. Whilst naproxen NSAIDs can cause a myriad of renal pathologies, interstitial nephropathy, pre-renal azotemia, azotemia, renal papillary necrosis, uh, it doesn't classically cause acute tubular necrosis, okay? It's not classic for NSAIDs. Not impossible, but it's not classic. I could do a 19-minute discussion on NSAIDs right now. I've made plenty of other clips on how they relate to the kidney. It's not the focus of this clip. It's the wrong fucking answer, as I already said. The answer is protein, okay? So... Amikacin, holy shit, OMG, weird drug. This is aminoglycoside, okay? Inhibits 30S ribosomal subunit, prevents translation, inhibits protein synthesis. Now look, it's not my opinion. This drug is on one of the NBMEs, okay? I've seen it. So this isn't me trying to be entertaining or nitpicky or pedantic. It's a drug you need to know, okay? So amikacin inhibits uh, protein synthesis. It's aminoglycoside. Aminoglycosides can cause acute tubular necrosis. And they can also cause ototoxicity, okay? Uh, vertigo, the room is spinning, neurosensory hearing loss, tinnitus, okay? Very high yield for aminoglycosides, classically used for gram-negative rods, okay? Aminoglycosides combined uh, with uh, vancomycin, as I said, th this is used for gram-positives. Aminoglycosides plus uh, uh, vancomycin for uh, empiric treatment for endocarditis, okay? Uh, ampicillin, gentamicin, also important combination for a myriad of things. 
got to keep this concise. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.